Hey guys, what's up? We're going to do a, the next game in our series. We're rated 909. We're going to play online. We're going to play a 1510. We're going to see what we get. And of course, I'm playing like these night first openings. Okay. Maybe if I get up to like 1400 with this, we'll do something different. Okay. So, the Nimzovich defense. White really should play d4 now. And. You know, if your opponent lets you grab the whole center, you grab the whole center. Okay. Oh, hello. Now that's kind of scary, isn't it? So this is blocking in the light squared bishop. To some degree. If I play e5 now. I'm staking quite a claim over that square. I'm going to do it. I don't see any reason not to do it. By the way, I'm refereeing later on, so I'll spare you the uh, luminous shirt. All right, okay, so uh, knight f3, attacks this pawn, it is defended. My hunch is play on, just, you know, I, I think this, I, I want to kind of prove that this is a, a, a timid and weak move. So I'm thinking bishop c5, d6, maybe pin, Maybe f5 at some point. So let's bring the bishop out first. Let's target the f-pawn. I could have also left the bishop at home, kind of anticipating knight c3, and then maybe bishop b4. Might have been good, but, you know, I do want to play d6. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I might hang back with this. Oh. We have contestation. Uh, London players will be very, very kind of familiar with this thing. Now, the, the kind of normal thing to do is, is to fall back. If I take here, then white captures towards the centre, has a a body. Jensen, everyone can hear that. I'm going to scratch, go somewhere else. No, go away. That's it. Yeah, they'll have three pawns in the centre which then allows them to kind of push forwards. Also, they have a semi-open f-file so that when they castle, their rooks can be here on f1. There's nothing in it for me. Okay. So I will just drop that to b6, I think. If they take, I take back. Okay. Oh, another quiet move. And again, this is inconveniencing the knight. Okay, moves here like d6. Knight g7 looks nice. Maybe even preparing that again. Um, knight can also come to, to g6. Is d6 better? Right, here's the question. Okay, what does my opponent want to do? Well, he's probably going to play bishop e2, and he's probably going to castle short. Probably. Nothing's guaranteed, especially with this opponent. This is Vuki Vul 23 from, I'm guessing, Serbia. Croatia. Ah. They all look the same to me. Okay, so what does he want to do? I mean, H6 is also a, a reasonable move. You know, kind of prevent the idea of preventing this, but then again, you have to say to yourself, look, if one of these pieces should come to this square, then I can play H6. So, how important is it for me to open up this bishop right now? Well, nothing's coming onto this diagonal. Do I want, how important is it for me to do this? Well, I'm expecting that bishop to go to e7. So, I don't know. I, 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 my hunch is that knight g e7, as opposed to knight c e7, is the more flexible move. Huh. Now I have this and this. Saying, off with your queen. Unless opponent wants to do this. So let's say, right, I castle here. You do that. I don't know. Uh, let's say I play d6 and he does this. I just castle, don't I? Rook defends f7. I think I can play d6 now. Yeah, we, we've still got a face off of bishops. That's okay. Still, if he takes, I take back with the a pawn. Um... So plan is castles, but I might even throw in this. Okay, so he's going for a cheeky checkmate. 
Okay, options. Now I don't like this because knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, ouch, I've got a queen on my face. Nobody wants that. So castles, rook and king defend f7. What's not to like? I'm, I'm happy with this. I've nearly completed development. Opponent's still a, a, a little way off. He's got th three moves to go. I've got two moves to go. I might kick, it, kick the knight out so I can play bishop b6 with tempo. I don't think the move c3 to c4 would be great for my opponent. And so what he's doing now, from a strategic positional point of view, because look, look at me, I'm learning strategic and positional stuff. He is now pushing in the center, proposing to smash open the center. Yeah, but problem is his king is still in the center. Uh, I have knight a5 with tempo on queenie. This pawn could be a pain. Instinctively, I'm thinking we should be breaking open the center. But let's think concretely. I've got 12 minutes, 24. What's this bunch of people want to be friends? I'm not, I don't make friends on this account. Don't make, I'm not making friends on a, on a speedrun account. Of course it's not a speedrun. Uh, one, two, three attackers. Hmm. Now, my arithmetic ain't what it used to be. Takey, takey, takey. I mean, I think I just win a pawn here. And I'm opening up the center. This is safe. Bang. I might even take the bishop, you know. Take with the bishop. If he takes, bang, that's with tempo. I'm also threatening c2. Uh, if I take with the knight, I'm hitting the queen, though. If I take the knight, hitting the queen. She can't go there, she can't go there. It does improve the knight. You know, knights become stronger the further up the board they go. I'm also very kind of conscious that my queen's eyeing up this knight. We don't want the machine that goes ping. Uh, so, you know, should this bishop undefend the knight at any point? Okay, there we go. Here's our little notification saying that our browser sucks. Well done, Apple. Congratulations again. It doesn't take, what, move nine of a game. Okay. Bishop c4. Puts three attackers on here. And the question we all want to know is, am I bothered? Knight a5. Now, this, this setup is quite a common one in the Danish, although it tends to be... Yeah, no, no, it is the, in the Danish, the full Danish. Sticking the queen on b3 behind the bishop, eyeing up f7. And a common response from black is knight to a5 if they've previously played knight c6. Because if I do this, yes, their only hope is to go with check. But the only way I can recapture here, I mean, I could step out of it. But if I do this, right, they check, I step away. I've just lost a pawn. I'm attacking the queen, yes. Um, but the bishop's adequately defended as well by the knight. Right. If I do this, and um, they take, I take with the rook. They can take with the queen defended by the knight. I have to move away. Again, doesn't it work? Right. Uh, this knight can defend. Actually, actually. So the first thing I do is like, well, I want to defend a light square. So I'm looking for knights on light squares. Because a knight on a dark square can't, can't help, because wherever he goes to, he's going to be on a light square, therefore he's only going to be looking at dark squares, therefore. It doesn't work. No, so this. And it also hits the bishop. I think that's probably the move we're looking for. The 
These aren't the moves you're looking for. Oh, cock. I just hung my bishop, though. Bugger. Well, I'm taking this guy out. Oh, that was a... That was a serious oversight. Okay, I've got two attacks on here. Right, I'm down a piece for a pawn. Action stations, boys and girls. <sighs> okay, I think I need to improve this knight. Yeah, I was just blinkered there, wasn't I? I should probably, I guess, have taken the bishop and allowed maybe this. Actually, knight takes is probably worse because it's hitting my queen and setting up a discovered check. So that's quite an unpleasant uh, move there. Right. I have c5 hitting the bishop. Also allows then queen a5 check. Knight might come to here, that's not bad. I'd like to play my rook. Well, that just hangs the bishop, what's going on? How often does one blunder follow another? It is so common. Well, you can have the pawn and then we're in an equal position. Okay. So queen is now on a dark square diagonal looking over there. I could bring my knight here with tempo. But my bishop is free to enter the game. Uh, I can also move my knight to g6 in a more kind of defensive role. Jensen, go out. That's really annoying me. Okay. Undefended. Stuck. Undeveloped. Pawn-wise, we are equal. We both have a pawn in the center. Mine is an isolated queen's pawn. His is technically defensible, because he can, he can play f3, right? Which doesn't massively weaken the dark squares, because I don't have a dark square bishop anymore. Question is, so I, th I think I want to develop the knight. Question is, which way do I want to go? Towards the king, in a more solid move. I could then come to here. But in fact, from either move, I could I could go to e5, so that's not too bad. Maybe e5 is the, is the destination, is the final destination for the knight anyway. Um, so I think we should move with tempo. <laughs> It's also a discovery on the night, I've just noticed. Yeah, clearly not uh, firing on all cylinders today, Jesus. Okay, so this is a double attack. Uh-huh. Okay, so this looks kind of obvious, but then knight can take. But if knight takes, pawn takes, but then queen takes pawn with check. Um, that's nice, though, because it hits the queen and hits c2, and c2 attacks the... Def the uh, the trapped rook. You can give up. You can pack it in as well, Woody. Wait. No. No. People are determined to undermine my speed run, aren't they? Okay. I might kick this knight out as well. It gives my bishop. Having said that, bishop's defending b7. All right, so the queen has found the square that defends both c2 and the knight. Jolly good show. Right, if I kick the knight, he can't get there and he can't get there. He can't get there and he can't get there. So he's, he's going backwards. So I'm doing it. Oh, a queen's also attacking my knight, cock. Come on, dopey. Sort it out. Actually, if queen takes my knight, I might t I could take with a queen. Okay. Right. Okay. Wake up, hunty. 
you absolute jelly brain. Okay, I've got this. Now, obviously, the, the key thing is that we've, uh, we've all noticed that my knight is uh, on prees. Should I develop the queen? Should I play a5 and defend the knight? Should I move the knight? It feels like a bit of a kind of one threat itis, really. Do you, do you know what I mean? This, this thing. Because it's like, well, does my opponent have a neat way to sort out all his problems? Well, yes. Defends that, defends that, and actually attacks that as well. Which my opponent, being 21 points higher rated than me, is obviously sharper. So I just let my opponent play a very decent move that just ties the whole room together. All right, back goes the knight. I'm inclined to play a5. And kind of hold fire with the knight. Might come back to here. Now, that's not a bad location anyway, you know, because if he trades, I trade. I reconnect my E and F rooks. I might do this as well and threaten to take and force G to take. That would be very unpleasant for my opponent. Okay. Let's um, complete development ish. Why not? One attacker. This knight can't defend this knight. This knight can move. It could go here. This is a bad square because it gets uh, taken. So what are you going to do? He's going to go there. Alrighty then. This is defended. Defended, 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 defended. Da, da, da. And of course, da, da, da. So my opponent is completely here, syncopated and aligned. All right. So it's actually a very close situation. I, I'm thinking that knight e5 is, is a splendid move. Um. Centralize. Uh, it's defended by pawn. There are, there's what one completely open file. This is this is a completely open file. So rook c8 has a lot going for it. This rook to e8 has has something going for it as well. Uh, I don't have a dark scope, but yeah, I, th I think we centralise the knight. I'm just going to try and make improving moves now. I'm down to four minutes as well. Might even tempt him to take, take, giving me the two central pawns and opening up the f-file. That's a thought, but I'm going to need to play more blitz light now. Either knight could come to here, so the move a6 makes sense. Okay, let's do this. Oh, there's no pre-moves. It's always good to have one in your pocket. I have knight here as well, I think the queen. The queen also still needs to defend c2, so... Oh, you don't like that. You don't like that, do you not? Okay. I think I might still play a6 as well. And its longest think has been 35 seconds so far. I need to build up my clock a bit. That's kind of forced. This knight is the only defender of this pawn. So the question is, can we do something about that knight? I see six takes and takes again. I improve my pawns slightly in the center, both of which are theoretically uncontested. Okay, that's a move that we've already seen. Okay, do I take the knight? Queen recaptures, I get this pawn. 
I take the knight, he takes my bishop. I get this and fork queen and rook. He does this, I do that. I take knight, takes bishop, fork, takes... I can just sidestep. Let's do it because um, time is of the essence. Queen takes, simple, I just drop back the bishop. Not to here because that undefensed the uh, d6 pawn. Opponent is being aggressive with his pawns now. I don't know about this, guys. He's playing very quickly. And obviously he, you know, but also he hung a piece. He's playing far more accurately than a 900 should. This is a move. Puts pressure on here. It's very well defended, though. I think rookie eight could complicate matters. I'm kind of liking this. My bishop's definitely just getting under everyone's feet right now. This pawn is pinned. Don't know about king h8. This in combination with this puts double pressure on there, but again, it is currently three times defended. I don't know why he didn't just take the pawn. This is a bit odd. Queen retreats. Okay, so there's one attacker on here. Okay, I'm just going to improve the bishop. I'm not going to think too hard about that. Okay, we've now got two attackers, and but still three defenders. Okay. Oh! Right, I can't take his queen hangs. If I go here, can I allow him to take? There a knight takes. If I let him take, it kind of isolates his pawn. Can I go here? Let him take here and then I take here. What if he goes e6? Takes, queen can take with check. <sighs> Gotta try something. I can just trade off then. I'm kind of liking the fact that I've got a bishop here. Okay, material is still equal here, guys. Okay. Now what about just queen e7? See, I'm just stopping this pawn right now. Now, if I think what white should be doing is putting more pressure on this d6 pawn. Um, I'd love to eye up that square. So maybe some like queen here. And can I do this now? Okay, it threatens checkmate. There doesn't do much. There. Knight will just take again he's got three attackers on it. Let's let's put in a threat, see what he does. D 
does he spot the uh, lurking bishop in its sort of Fianchetto sniper hole? Sniper's nest. This would be a very bold move to make. I might then just play h5 and attack the pin pawn. Okay, here we go. He pushes probably rookie eight. Do I just have this now? Pawn can't take. I believe I win material. I take queen takes. Here again, probably rookie eight. Just keep everything. Oh, no. Oh, you're kidding me. I can't do that. Oh, no. What a... Ugh. My rook hangs. Here, queen takes. I don't know. This is just the weirdest combination between. I mean, I don't, you know, that's another check. Here, queen takes as mate. Here. Queen takes. I don't know, guys. Our opponent has played a mix of very insightful and sharp moves and some really dumb ones as well. But he's, he's now in a completely one position. It's utterly resignable. But not quite. I don't know, what do you make of this? You can take this bishop. You've got free material, you're plus eight points. What are you doing? I'm not gonna see that out. I don't know, I don't know. Let's have a look at the uh, analysis. Okay, here we go. Chess.com, these, these alerts, like this analysis can be sh shared, yeah. Okay, it should disappear. 67% from uh, white. But yeah, like I say, a real mixed bag. And I just played poorly at 11.50. <laughs> They played 1,300, so well outside their uh, thing. But let, like you say, look, here is White's play, you know. Some terrible moves, and then some, you know, very, very, very tight play, and then some more terrible moves. And I was just universally bad. Here, I had an advantage. Centralizing my knight was not the move. That's three attackers and only two defense. That's a tricky move to see. Um, oh right, but having the lights, the white pawn there blocks the bishop and kind of enforces the uh, the fork. Whoa, tough one, that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I didn't play brilliantly, but I mean, look how tight this 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 whole middle game was, you know. And even here, here we're equal. Yeah, there I should have come straight in for the attack. 
But with this, white is better. And now I think part of part of the reason that it's giving me eleven fifty is that my opponent found sequences, strings of very kind of precise moves. As as the best move diff graph shows, you know, in this whole middle bit, you know, some slight inaccuracies, and that's it. Um, I don't know. Welcome to the world of the, of the speed run, guys. Fascinating stuff. So I'll leave that with you. What do you think of that game? Who knows? Okay. Um, so what's the situation? We've lost some rating points, eh? But we'll uh, we'll carry on. We're still kind of learning our way around all of this. I don't know something profoundly unsatisfying about that one. But uh, yeah, so the thing is, yeah, when when your opponent finds tight and accurate moves, um, it it makes it harder for you to find good ones. Like um, Colin has said in uh, in a couple of our recent chess bootcamp live sessions, he says it's it's easy to find good moves in good positions. It's easy to find bad moves in bad positions. But the, the better you play and the tighter you play and the more aggressively you play, and here, here my opponent was particularly aggressive with his pawns, and look at these central rooks as well, you know. Um, yeah, the fewer options it gives your opponent to find something good, and they have to dig much deeper, which I did not do in that game. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you soon.